Being scared of the dark is actually pretty common with kids, and it can start as early as two or three years old when our kids' imagination really starts to go wild. But they're not quite mature enough yet at this age to distinguish between their imagination and reality. So it's our job as parents to help. But lots of times we actually get this wrong and we end up accidentally encouraging our kids' fears. Let me show you how to stop doing this. I'm gonna give you six ways to handle a fear of the dark so that your kid can feel safe and cozy in their own room. Let's start with a couple of things that you should not be doing. If your child is struggling to go to sleep or really doesn't wanna stay in their room at bedtime, listen to this advice. If your child is not explicitly saying that they are scared of the dark, don't plant any ideas in their head. It's really natural to look for like a reason why your child might be fighting sleep or not wanting to stay in their room, but do not assume that it's because of a fear. If you're saying things like, I know it's dark, but there's nothing to be afraid of, or you've got your lovey, he'll keep you safe. What you're actually doing is you're planting the idea that dark equals scary, or that they need something in their room with them to keep them safe. This happens way more than we realize because as parents, we're just doing everything we can to reassure our child and make sure they feel safe. But sometimes our words accidentally make them feel unsafe in order to reassure them. So just make sure that your words aren't doing this. So that's my first piece of advice. If your child is not saying that they're scared of the dark, don't plant any ideas in their head. The next thing I want you to understand is that your reaction to your child saying that they're scared of the dark actually goes a really long way to determine if that fear is gonna intensify or diminish. So imagine this scenario after the bedtime routine. Your child starts saying like, no, 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 don't leave mommy, don't leave mommy, I'm scared, I'm scared, it's too dark, mommy, don't leave. The parent tries to leave, the kid's running out of the room saying it's too dark, so the parent comes back in and you know turns on a night light and then the kid runs out a few minutes later, mommy, I'm scared, I'm scared. Maybe the parent comes back in to try to turn up the night light, make it a little bit brighter, tries to leave again, the kid's running out, I'm scared, I'm scared. The parent's like, it's not even dark anymore. Basically, it's bright in there now. There's nothing to be afraid of. And you know, the kid's running out and the parent's trying to reassure them. And eventually the parent just decides to lay in the room, lay in the bed with the child to help them fall asleep, to give them that extra bit of reassurance um, and stays in the room while the child falls asleep. So in this scenario, the parent is teaching the child two different things. So the first thing the kid is learning is that the longer they keep running out of the room and complaining and complaining, the parent will ultimately come back and sleep with them. So that's the first thing that the child's learning. But the second thing the child is learning is that maybe something is wrong with being in the dark in their room by themselves. Because, you know, first the parent came and turned some lights on. Then the parent said that it was fine for them to be in their room and that everything was okay and that it wasn't scary. But yet the parent still came and slept with the child. So it's delivering a little bit of a mixed message. So the kid is kind of left wondering, hmm, you know, maybe it is not safe for me to be alone in my dark room by myself. A great analogy for this is daycare drop-off. So it's totally normal in the beginning for your kid to feel a little unsure about going to daycare. But that's why daycare teachers always tell you to leave quickly and don't linger, even if your child is crying. Because what happens is if you linger or if you keep, you know, you try to leave, but you keep coming back to give more hugs, you're actually sending the message to your child that you're a little bit unsure or uneasy about leaving them there. And it's unsettling for your child. So for a successful school drop-off, that's why teachers always say, drop them off and just leave confidently because your child is gonna feed off of your confidence. And it is exactly the same with bedtime. So those are a couple ways that you may be handling your child's fear in the wrong way. Let's get into some better ways to handle it if your child says they're scared of the dark. If your child is verbalizing that they're scared of the dark, don't dismiss it, okay? Even if you think it's total baloney and totally made up, just don't dismiss it. Because if you're saying things like, oh, it's not dark, or you have a nightlight, or you've been sleeping in here for three years, you, you know, you're not scared of the dark. If you're saying stuff like that and you're really kind of dismissing um, their fear, what's gonna happen is they're really gonna dig their heels in and you're gonna see that complaint about the dark just get stronger and stronger because when kids don't feel heard, that's when you see these fears escalate. So instead, get inquisitive. 
ask them questions about what exactly is scary to them and let them answer in their own words. Don't plant any ideas. What exactly is scary? Well, what do you mean? Well, show me. Well, how did you hear about that? You know, really asking them a lot of questions. And even if you need to lay in their bed with them and in the dark and look at their room in the dark, the goal here is to really make your child feel heard. Then problem solve together. So if it's some type of shadow that they're seeing in their room, maybe move some things around so that, you know, the shadow's gone. Or if it's that, you know, it's really dark under the bed or in one corner of their room, get some of those glow stick bracelets and put them under the bed. So there's just a little bit of light to illuminate that area so it doesn't look so scary. Um, sometimes it might be the blinking light of the smoke detector on the ceiling. Cover that light up with some electrical tape. So problem solving together and really allowing your child to feel heard really makes them feel empowered and helps build up that self-reliance. And if you really think it is too dark in the room, then feel free to use a dim nightlight or another good option is an amber colored salt lamp. And you could set that on the dimmest setting and that's fine to provide some light in their room. Another good idea are bedtime books about fears and I'll link to some of my favorites in the notes. The final and most important step in eliminating these fears that are keeping you stuck in your kid's room is to be confident. You want your child to grow up to be self-reliant and able to regulate their own emotions and typical bedtime fears are a great opportunity for teaching these skills. And it can be tough because our natural inclination as parents is to like prevent our child from ever, ever feeling distress, but that's really not going to help them in the long run. Let your child know that you're sure that they can tackle their fears, even if you're not totally sure yet yourself. Your confidence is going to be contagious and it's going to help to reassure them that there is nothing to be afraid of. And your consistency is going to be what helps them get over it quickly. Join my next free toddler sleep masterclass if you want to learn even more about getting your kiddo to be an independent sleeper. I'll put a link to sign up in the notes.